Okay, so I wanted to provide an update on the wildfire smoke impacting millions of Americans across the country right now. The president was briefed on the wildfires in Canada last week and has been regularly updated since. He directed his team to provide impacted communities whatever support they need. Our team here at the White House is in touch with the Government of Canada. We have already deployed over 600 U.S. firefighters and personnel, as well as equipment like water bombers to help Canada battle the fires. Now, I know for many communities out west, this is nothing new. They experience this every year, but it is certainly getting worse. It is yet another ex alarming example of the ways in which the climate crisis is disturbing our lives and our communities. That's why from day one, President Biden rightfully recognized the climate crisis, climate change as one of, uh, one of the four crises facing our nation as he was coming into the Oval Office to, uh, after being inaugurated, and why he, why he made tackling climate change one of his top priorities and has done historic investments in doing just that, taking, uh, taking move forward with historic, historic policies. Uh, so this is not uncommon, sadly. Uh, it's only getting worse. Uh, but this is why the president has made climate change uh, a priority. This is why he's taken the aggressive actions that he's taken, historic actions, uh, and he's certainly going to continue uh, to, uh, to stay focused on how we move forward in dealing with climate change. But again, I'm not an expert, uh, but clearly, as we have seen over the last couple of decades, climate change has been uh, a real problem. It is the science that shows us that. That's why today, before God and my family, I'm announcing that I'm running for President of the United States of America. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence announced on Wednesday that he will challenge his former boss, Donald Trump, for the Republican presidential nomination. January 6th was a tragic day. Once a Trump loyalist, Pence blasted the former president for his role in the 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. President Trump's words were reckless. He endangered my family. The American people deserve to know that on that day, President Trump also demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. Now voters will be faced with the same choice. I chose the Constitution, and I always will. Pence's speech in the early voting state of Iowa marked his most forceful condemnation to date of Trump's part in the Capitol riot, when his former running mate was trying to overturn his 2020 election defeat to Democratic President Joe Biden. I believe that anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. And anyone who asks someone else to put them over the Constitution should never be president of the United States again. Many of Trump's diehard supporters view Pence's refusal to overturn the election result as treachery. Pence, who served as governor of Indiana and is a former congressman, still embraces many of Trump's policies while portraying himself as an even-keeled and consensus-oriented alternative. It is extremely rare for a vice president to run against a president he served under, and it has happened just a handful of times in U.S. history. Pence joins a crowded field of Republican White House hopefuls challenging Trump for the party's presidential nomination. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who at one time was an advisor to Trump, entered the race on Tuesday and also to gain at the former president. By the way, I voted for him twice. Okay, am I a Trump voter then? Hell no, man. North Dakota Governor Doug Berger also jumped into the race on Wednesday taking the number of candidates seeking the Republican presidential nomination into double digits. Pence enters the race with a mountain to climb, polling at just 5% and trailing Trump by 44 points, according to a Reuters Ipsos opinion poll in May. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has been named a target of an investigation into his handling of classified materials and his lawyers were notified by federal prosecutors on Monday, a person familiar with the matter told Reuters. The notification does not necessarily mean Trump will be charged. People are alerted so that they have a chance to present their own evidence before a grand jury. The news of the notification serviced two days after Trump's legal team met with Justice Department officials to discuss the case. The lawyers could not be reached for comment, 
and the Trump campaign did not respond to a request to comment. Last August, around 13,000 documents were seized from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. A hundred of them were marked as classified, even though one of his lawyers previously claimed that all classified materials had been returned. Trump, the frontrunner in the race for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, faces growing legal woes. He's being investigated for allegedly trying to overturn his election laws to Democrat Joe Biden in 2020. He was also recently fined for sexually abusing former Elle magazine columnist E. Jean Carroll and defaming her by calling her a liar. The flood levels from the destruction of the Novokhovka Dam in Ukraine are expected to reach their peak Wednesday, but the scale of the devastation across large parts of the region has brought fresh heartbreak in what is still an active war zone. It's now threatening a new wave of homelessness, disease, toxic chemical contamination, and even warnings of floating landmines in this ecological disaster. This is the city of Kherson, which was once occupied by Russian forces before Ukraine's military retook it. It's where Reuters camera crew found this resident, saying her grandmother is trapped on the first floor of a building with her cats and dogs. <laughs> She was brought there yesterday, thinking it would be safer for her. Alas, it is not. Elsewhere in the city is Irina, an animal rescue volunteer. She says her group has already recovered up to 30 dogs and are trying to save whatever animals they can. At first, they need to wait for a boat so they can go out and save more. Russian state media are reporting that although the water levels may have peaked, the floods are expected to remain for up to 10 days. The long-term damage is another matter. Ukraine's government says the destruction of the dam, which it blames on Russia, is threatening to leave hundreds of thousands of residents without access to drinking water. It also says it will turn what was once farmland into swamps and turn other areas into desert. Russia blames Ukraine for the disaster and has imposed a state of emergency in the areas that it controls, such as this town of Novokohovka, where the destroyed dam is. President Valery Melnik's home is flooded. He says he won't leave. He wants to stay, he says, because the war can't go on forever.